you know, coming up you know, off another, you know, disappointing home loss uh, to a good football team. I'll say that uh, they, did, they did a nice job. They played hard. Uh, we're hungry, uh, and uh, you know, just coming off that that, uh, that ball game, and for as many little things we, you know, we had go wrong, uh, however you want to call it, for all the penalties that we had offensively, um, I think we had three on defense, way too many on offense. I at least count them on defense. Uh, two of them were just, you know. A guy lining up off sides, uh, barely. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, you know, just with everything you know that was done in that game, to maybe lose the game and shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, at the end of the game, we had a chance to win a football game, but we didn't pull it out. And, you know, in the past, we found ways of getting that done. We didn't get it done Saturday. You know, your luck starts to run out a little bit, and for whatever reason, we know there's reasons out there. So, uh, but uh, you know, we closed that last night. We're heading on to Clemson. Uh, maybe the best football team we played this year. I shouldn't say maybe they are. Um, I mean, they're 315 across the line on their defensive line. They got some big dudes. They're athletic. Bunch of first rounders on defense um, and offense. Uh, I think their offensive line is probably the best offensive line of you know seen this year without a question. Um, matter of fact, someone asked me last week, one of your reporters, who is the best offensive line? And I gave it to him, and I meant to text him. I forget who it was, EJ. But uh, you know about what the best offensive line. You know, I gave him a, I gave him two, um, but if I had his number, if I remember who the heck it was, I'd give him back, uh, call back and say this is it. Uh, these guys are big, fast, fast, uh, physical. Uh, you know, our D tackles better hang in there because these dudes are going to double team you and, and try to hang you on the goalpost uh, up front. Uh, their tailback, uh, Phil uh, Maffa, is you know he plays 90% of the time. He's 230 pounds. Very similar to the tailback in North Carolina. He's athletic, uh, he's physical, and they like to run the ball. Um, and obviously, Cade, their quarterback, is, is really good too. So, um, yeah, they're winning for a reason. And, and uh, they, you know, we got a really good football team that we've got to be you know, well prepared for coming in this weekend. With, with your offense, I mean, you've reshuffled the offensive line. You've seen both quarterbacks, you know, by choice or by not. You've seen both quarterbacks. You've, you've got receivers. You've done a lot of things sort of personnel wise. What, what, it's sort of still on the table for you for adjustments and changes to try and improve it going forward. We're going to find out if you could play wide out this week, maybe. I bet he could. You think he could? With his hands. Um, <laughs> um, you know, hey, that's what that's what you do in, in college football. You know, you can't go get a free agent. You, got, you, you deal with what you have to deal with, and you try to juggle, try to put the best 11 players on the field offensively and defensively and special teams. Uh, but you move around and you try to, you know, try to get the best fit. And, you know, we're trying to get the best 11 players on the field next week. That's our job. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not easy sometimes. And, and, uh, but, you know, the first thing we got to do is make sure we don't shoot ourselves in the foot offensively. That's what it comes down to. We had way too many uh, first and 15s, you know, second and 15s. And, you know, you talk about, you know, I think someone mentioned it maybe the last couple of weeks, you know, third down. It's hard to convert third and long, period. I don't care who you are. I mean, when you talk about a third down conversion, Okay, go back and look and see where we are, third and short, third medium, third and long, probably a better indication. Uh, EJ and his gang, they don't break that down on game day. But you know, third line long, if you're in a bunch of third longs, and when you start off first, first and 15, you got to get 15 to get a first down. You make it hard on the quarterback, you make it hard on everybody. And uh, you make it hard on the O-line because you know, people are thinking, obviously, you're going to have to pass it a little bit. So um, you know, you, we got we got to make sure that we're, you know, we're, we only need 10 yards every first time we touch the ball. How do you get through to – you know, we haven't done that all year, so I, you know, um, it's it's attention to detail. You know, it's focus. You know, was there a reason? I don't, you know, I don't know how you couldn't be focused. Uh, did we think we were way better than them? Something I don't. I have no idea. I can't imagine after coming off a loss at SMU that you'd not be locked in, focused. Okay, um, but it's got to be there, and that's our coach's job. That's my job to make sure they're focused. So I blame it on me. You made some big adjustments to the offensive line. Were you happy with it? Is it going to stay the way it is? I don't know. Gary, um, was you know I, I, I guess are we going to stay with it? We'll figure that out. Um, but uh, you know, um, you know, was I happy with it? Um, some things I was happy. Sometimes I wasn't. Um, but uh, you know, we, we certainly got to do a better job. And you know, I think you get better by reps. And you, you know, you look at Isaiah Montgomery, his first start. Uh, we saw Terrence Enos, his first start looked like at Notre Dame. You know, a year ago, uh, when you look at just guys playing in their first ball game and, and getting their feet wet. So uh, you knew it wasn't going to be a perfect day. Uh, 
but um, you know he did some good things. I mean, I think one of the one sacks he gave up, we had a chip, and you know, Gavin comes down and clips the guy, and the guy gets a sack. We just, you know, it's like you're thinking you're trying to help him. We, you know, maybe we hurt him, uh, but he was getting chip help there. But uh, you know, overall, there were some good things. But I think there's growing pains whenever you make that move. You know, we, you know, um, you know, part of the thought process was, uh, you know, taking Ryan Bear, are we moving from right to left? Are we hurting Ryan Bear? You know. You know, so you know, there was all those like, okay, now the right tackle is broken and the left tackle is broken. So those are all conversations you have, and you're just again trying to put the best eleven guys on the field at one time. Which Second. nobody would get hurt. That would make it a lot easier. Second pass by how Eli learns every week. What did the lesson that he learned in particular from this game? Um, you know, I thought he made some really good decisions. You know, um, you know, Coach Bell thought he made. You know, I think you guys talked to Coach Bell later in the week here, but uh, Coach. Uh, well, Eli made some good decisions. Didn't throw the ball as well as we wanted to. You know, wasn't very accurate. A couple of times over the middle, uh, wasn't as accurate as he's been. But as far as his decision making and putting the ball where it was supposed to go, uh, he did that more often than not. And how, how have you seen Nate react over the course of the year to not being a starter? What has he worked on? How has he improved if he gets that you know, next opportunity? You know, Nate. You know, we've had a lot of confidence in Nate. You know, obviously, we, you know, he doesn't get the reps. Um, so anytime you get put in that position at the end of the game, you, you know, you, you, know uh, you feel bad for him because he doesn't get the reps. And I, you know, I don't think that's a fair you know, e exam on who Nate Yarnell is. Um, and I think you know, if he's ever going to start again, I think you know, if he was able to get the starting reps, um, that you'd see a different guy. Um, but he's done a great job hanging in there. You know? um, you know, obviously, you know, there's, there's two you know, picks in the second half you're not happy with. And you know, you talk about, you know, you know, Eli in the first half, you know, up until the point where you know, he gets hurt, they'll, you know, we're moving the ball and, and, uh, and he's, you know, and he's protecting the ball. And, you know, so we, you know, give that to, to Eli and that's kind of why he won that starting job is protecting the ball and keeping it from the other team. So, uh, so he's made, you know, when you think about that, he's done a nice job as far as, you know, for the most part of not taking chances and, and being smart with the football, which Matt, is not easy. I'm sorry, you anticipate Eli playing Saturday? It's not an yeah, control I'm, these guys. I'm sorry. I, I anticipate everybody know. playing Saturday, except Branson Taylor. So we won't see Branson. Should I go to your show Wednesday night? Mm -hmm. Depends on what Chris Hanks tells me. You know, our doctors make all those decisions. I can't. I wish I could tell you. I don't even go down to the training room. You know, to see. You know, like I stay out of the training room. It's not my job. My job is to coach football. Let our trainers and the best medical care in the country take care of. You know. You know, if you can sneak down the train, you might find out. Well, go see Hanks. You got to get a build a relationship with Hanks. There's a thought. Pat, when you, I guess this is sort of a big picture question. Uh, when you look at the ACC, if you guys don't have anybody inside the top 10 as a league, part of that's because you're beating each other, right? I mean, it's a good league. Do you worry that the perception, the preseason perception was, look, the Big Ten and the SEC, they've got all this, and then you look at the rankings, like, they're near the top. Is it worried that the ACC, the parity has almost been a bad thing? I think this, and I'll say it again, that the ACC from top to bottom is the best conference out there. I, I really believe that. I think every weekend anybody can beat anybody. Man, Virginia football team was a good team. They got the whole entire offense line back. You know, they were down three guys. You know, they weren't out for the year. Um, and um, you know, so you know, those were all. You know, I, I think the ACC is top to bottom is is really good. And yeah, it, hurt, it hurts when you're beating each other up. Uh, you know, no question about it. Do you feel like you guys are the league is being gained a little bit more for losses as opposed to maybe what you see other conference clubs? Probably, and I don't go evaluate it, but you know, doesn't you know, the disrespect is there preseason. I'm sure it's there midseason. Um, with the with the quarterback, you, you said he likes making good decisions. Is he? He's been hit quite a bit at this point. Do you see any change in his demeanor in terms of like maybe first reason out there? I'm just going to try to make a play with my legs as opposed to making. Sometimes, I mean, I think he's going through, some, you know, you can watch his eyes and what he's doing there. Um, and again, he's been under pressure, you know, you know we've, seen, we've seen that. So, um, you know, I think, I think that's obvious. But, uh, you know, obviously, you know, when he, you know, got dinged up, um, it was on a run and he's trying to slide and it's a targeting. You know, you wish you'd just dive and go get it and just get, you know, sometimes everybody thinks that sliding is the best thing to do. Sometimes, you know, you're taking unnecessary hits if you just freaking go. And at times, he, and then he's slowing down, which makes it even harder, I think. So, what have you seen from Clemson? What makes them a different team than you've seen in the past? Well, 
what makes them different. I don't know if it's been much different. They've been touted since I've been here, right? I mean, we've, this is going to be our fifth time playing them. We've played them four previous times already. Uh, you know, uh, once in a championship game, they're talented. I mean, nothing's different. Um, you know, they got a bunch of four and five star players. Uh, they got the best of the best, and uh, they've, they've had the best for a long, long time. They've been the, 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 the measuring stick as far as ACC football for many years, and Dabo does a great job. Think about Rodney Hammond's played four games this season, didn't play on Saturday. Is there a consideration for him taking red shirt coming back another year? Yeah, there is. There's, there's, you know, certainly, like, you know, we had planned that, you know, as far as just making sure we didn't waste a year, you know, so we'll see how, how the whole thing goes. Uh, but we're not just going to put him in there just to put him in there. Ted, did you hear from the ACC about that? You, you said after the game, you know, we'll hear from the ACC Monday or Tuesday about that. Yeah, that yeah. Call. I have heard, and again, you guys know. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about officiating. You know, you know, I'm going to be smart, and I'm not going to say a word. But you guys all watch the tape. That's probably all I need to watch. Would, would, how would you? Was the explanation to your satisfaction? You watch the videotape. That's all it needs to be said. I'm not allowed to say anything about what I heard or said or you know was told. You know, not happy. At senior day, uh, what does this group meant to you? That the ones that have been through. Yeah, I forgot about that, Jeff. I'm glad, glad you brought that up. Uh, you know, senior day every year you know, matters. I talked to our, our team last night just about you know playing for our seniors again. You know, uh, you know, going out there and you know, all those seniors, all these guys that sit in the front row. You know, love each and every one of them. I don't care if they've been here just for six months, three months. I mean, you build a relationship with these guys every day. See them every morning. Good morning, every morning. Um, and uh, you know, the relationship we got with our players is is, is, is primary. And uh, you know. I want to see them all go out on top, number one. Uh, we'll have a nice senior senior evening Friday night before the game and uh, have all the parents in there. So it's a, it's a special night, it's a special day. Um, so I can't say enough about these seniors and their leadership and, and uh, yeah, just need to finish the season strong, need their leadership. How was the demeanor of the guys last night? Like normal, like normal. Um, like when you tell your wife you're gonna be home for dinner, Jerry, she gets mad at you because you're like two hours late. I know you do that all the time. He's way beyond that. Huh? He's way beyond that. So she's, she doesn't care about you anymore? Um, but, uh, no, she, you know, um, you know, obviously they're down, you know, uh, just like they were the week before. No different. Um, same as they were the week before. Nobody likes to uh, take a, take one in the, in the chin, take a, take a loss. And, and they're down, and they should be. Um, and, uh, but they were, they were great walking out here last night. That's the most important thing. I remember you saying after the Cincinnati game, got down there was, there was this confidence on the sideline the guys just knew they were going to win now after the way the last two games have gone and really even Syracuse and Cal a little bit with the way the offense is but you are you concerned about some of the confidence waiting are you seeing some of the confidence no I'm not concerned about the confidence there was confidence there in the fourth quarter I mean you know Nate Yarnell walked by me and said don't worry coach we're going to win the game so I mean there's confidence there's swag on the sideline I mean I think that's probably what makes it more disappointing is like you know defense gets a stop and we're going to you know everybody's like we're going to go down and score uh, okay, okay, then we throw a pick, and then defense goes out there. We give up a first down. We have a little execution issue on defense um, that wasn't, you know, we should have got, you know, we had two first downs there. We should have got the ball back again, which again is what we call a four-minute drill. And we can't have, you know, one of eleven not doing their job. Uh, but it wasn't a real, you know, um, you know, real good play there. But uh, you know, um, but I, I believe our kids have confidence. I think they thought they were going to pull it out, and I think that's when you you know you're in the last two minutes and six seconds, and you go, okay, here it is, it's a, here we go again. That the kids had confidence without a question. That's what you know. That's what crushes you. What that's what's like, uh, like it's that you know you didn't get it done. So yeah. that, that hurts. You know, when you take back the SMU. Our kids didn't quit in that game, but there was you know, that was going to be a tough comeback. That was you know that wasn't what this weekend was. Are they still, is Clemson still sort of the, do you still consider them sort of the gold standard for the conference? I do, I do, because of the consistency over a period of time. I mean, you know, you know Florida State can go, you know, win one, Pitt can go win one. You know, we've been there, you know, twice in the last, whatever, nine years. Um, you know, a lot of people haven't been there that many times. And, and uh, I think I said back in the summer, three teams, Florida State, Clemson, and Pitt have won it in the last, whatever, 13 years, 14 years. But when you think about Clemson, I mean, like they've done it over and over. They might have a bad year here or there, but like uh, historically, you know, Dabo's done the, the best job, and um, and 
you know, I just, that's, that's plain and simple. I mean, the, the numbers will tell you that. Does that get the attention of the kids in your room? You know, I mean, I, look, I, I know, I'm, I'm not saying you don't have respect for every moment, obviously you do, but some things stand out more than others. Sometimes. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, if it last week didn't get their motor going, I sure hope, you know, everybody has the ambitions of playing in the National Football League. Like, you want to go, we'll see what you got against Clemson. You know, let's see you play your best game here. If you weren't focused for Virginia, which I still, you know, can't imagine you weren't, and I'm not saying anybody was uh, not focused, but uh, but if, if you know they didn't get your focus, I would imagine Clemson would get your focus when you took the tape on. Anything additional? Coach, thank you.